Okay, welcome back. I've got to plant up these carnivorous plants I've just bought. Always wanted some of these. I see some the other day. Uh, spoke to the fella and he said you can keep them outside. With these ones and that, they'll overwinter and that. They'll die back to this little crown. You can protect them a bit, you know, cover them up or bring them in if you want to. He said, but they will survive over winter. This one, when it dies off, you just cut them back to the stems back down here and again it will sprout next season and uh, start growing again so I've always wanted some of these so I've got myself a couple um, and we'll see how we get on right, so I've also got this little sucker now this is again carnivorous plant it's a lot different to that one uh, try and get a picture if we can we can zoom in anyway so you can just see there down the size that little hue sticking out the side and what that is is it's like it's tiny little pores and they're all sticky it's all covered in like a sap and as the flies go on there there's one there they stick to it so you just see a tiny little fly stuck to that there the camera is absolutely refusing to focus on it you can get an intermittent focus and there you go that's close as I'll get there you go, there, yeah, brilliant. Couldn't have done that first time. So there's those little uh, sticky paws that are all down the side of the plant. And the fly goes into them, sticks to them. And it basically drinks the fly, you know, a bit like spiders do. So that's a one little plant that catches flies. And these are two other types. I cannot for the life of me remember the names of them. I haven't a clue, but... These are a couple of different varieties. This one with its little red stems. And again, this one. I like the ones with the red on the green. They sort of stand out nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these two up. I think it's going to be too much to have all three of them together. Uh, I want them to be able to grow and not be on top of each other. <laughs> I was looking for a, like, a flat planter. And I found this. So what I've got is a little tray and a riddle or sieve big garden sieve it was only a couple of quid in B&M so what my plan is is basically these need to sit in water so these are sitting in water at the moment he said basically keep it about half filled so I'm working out roughly it's probably a little bit lower but I'm hoping that will do um, so I'm going to put some stones in the bottom so that hopefully all the soil doesn't just fall out and wash out the bottom um, just not really for drainage more to sort of let the water through if anything because I want it to stand in the water and the soil to stay wet then I'm going to mix up they like an acid soil so I'm going to mix up some of this ericaceous with a little bit of grit I'm going to put some stone chips in the bottom and some bark um, see if any of that bark in the bottom sort of composted down a little bit like nice small little bits just to mix it all up keep it nice and acidy and uh, improve that soil for them right let's get this underway Okay. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to chuck some of these in the bottom. I don't want too deep a layer just to cover it. So hopefully stop the soil just washing straight out. Something like that. So just to cover that bottom. Stop the soil running out the bottom. And allow the water to percolate through and up into the soil. Right. I'm going to mix me some compost for this. I'm going to use a bit of the, this is peat free topsoil. Of the base. I'll like say they just do prefer peat, haven't got any. I'm going to mix up some grit in there. Ericaceous compost. So a little bit of bark in there, smaller bits. There we go. Not bad. A little bit more soil in it. Nice and free and airy. Plenty of uh, compost and bark and stuff in there. A little bit of soil. 
all, hold it all together as a binder. Yeah, that's the main thing. Plants are growing in. So that looks good, nice and gritty. We've got quite a nice gritty composty with woody texture in there so that should do perfectly for this we're going to chuck that in use your hands you tip it in use a spade shovel you know whatever you whatever tools you got i might need to mix up a bit more of this i don't think i'm gonna have enough in this one little bucket so that looks like rubbish it's out of the bag so we'll get rid of that Let's speed things up a bit I'm going to pile this up a wee bit into the middle as well, so just to deepen it up a wee bit. That don't look too bad. All right, there we go. So right, now we've got our soil ready. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pots that they're in. I'm going to work out where I want them. So I want one at the back and then one in the front. And this is going to cover the bottom half of the stems, they're going to grow out of it. This one's actually flowered, and when I brought it home, it actually snapped. And I popped it back up, and believe it or not, three days later, it's still standing. <laughs> I'm just expecting it to fall back over, but it's, it's, it's actually stayed in its upright position. So, well pleased with that. Right, I'm going to pop these out gently. So I'm just going to gently squeeze the pot round. Pop it out from there, put my fingers over the top, flip it. Careful not to break the stems. Gently work that pot off. I'll put that out of the way. Put that pot in the soil. Stand it in there. I'll put this where I want it. And I'll do the same with the other one in a second. I'll remove the soil from that area. Hopefully without digging out the stones in the bottom. little pot in there. I'm going to build that up in a second. Do the same with this one. Flip it. Gently remove that from the pot. Away. Now, I could have done with a slightly deeper tray but this is all I could find. I might have to change it in the future. We'll see. Yeah, I'll see how well they do works or if it doesn't yeah we'll find out right so that in there now I'm going to build up a little bit of compost around these so ideally slightly deeper tray is what I was after, but I couldn't find one. I'm making do. I'm just going to ramp it up slightly, and hopefully it's sitting in enough water. If it don't, I might have to get a deeper tray for it to sit in the bottom. But I think we'll be all right. As long as I keep it well watered. these plants weren't up to the top of these pots so I'm just going to gently firm it down you don't want to ram it down really tight just gently firm it in remove the pots jiggle jiggle little wiggle there we go right so that's my holes ready we've got exactly the right shape size hole for the plant that just came out of that pot I'm going to sink him in there, like so. Sink that one in there. Which way round do we want it? One that way. There we go. Very gently, just firm them down. That ain't bad. It's a little bit low on the soil this side. This one's gone in beautifully. I might just lift this out. I'll get the tag in there, look, that's buried in there. Might be able to just remove a little bit of soil, teasing that out. 
you can add some perlite and bits and pieces in and I think what we've got in here so if I just widen this out a bit spread them roots I should be able to just squash them down a little bit let them roots come out the sides they will sink a little bit lower in this pot so although it's not as high they will, it will spread out and the roots will spread instead of going down you know they'll spread out in that pot beautiful and hopefully we can get this moss to continue and grow over I might be able to find some moss around the garden I can cover some of this with but that beautifully done there look at that and you've got to water these with rainwater as well that's the thing you, you, they won't like tap water if you do have to use tap water you have to uh, add a bit of acid to it now uh, I've recommended you could use a bit of vinegar in it as well so like that and what we got here so this is a name on there I can't read that so uh, Failure. Yep, no, can't really read that. Not worth keeping, don't know what he says. But there you go. A lot of you planty people out there will know exactly what these are. I don't. I'm going to use this water that they've been standing in because that's got all their goodness in. Yeah, just gently pour that over there. I don't want to pour it on the soil, I've just put in too much because it'll wash it away. I'll get you fine water in a can in a minute. Water that in once I've put it where I want it. Now, these like full sunshine. That looks brilliant. I'm pleased with that. Like I say, I'll find some moss and that to cover that top. Yeah, well pleased with that. So, this one's actually in flower and they look great in there. So, no, I'm really pleased. That looks good. So there we go. That's me carnivorous plants all done. Yeah, I was right. There's definitely not enough room to get that last one in there. It would have been far too much. I could have spaced these two, like one here and one there. I think it was just far too much in one small area. I'm hoping that these crowns will split and grow. This one's already divided into two. So I've actually got two plants here. And once these get bigger, they'll split again and I'll have more plants. So we'll be able to spread and uh, make a bigger display, you know. So looking forward to that, you know, we'll see how they grow, see if I can look after them and if they survive, <laughs> see if they come back after winter, that'll be the one. So now I'm going to mix up some more of that soil, I'm going to put this in a bigger pot and we'll give that some water as well. That needs to just move, I'm going to find out where I'm going to put it and then uh, water it up so that it's nice and wet and this needs to stay constantly full of water. So I need to water this regularly so that that stays full, especially when it's really hot and it's drying out, I need to make sure that that doesn't dry out and that soil stays stays wet all the time so we'll uh, be watering that regularly and like I say it has to be rainwater so you do need a water butt um, or you're gonna have to do something to make your water from your tap more acidic but there you go right so that's one done I'm gonna find something to pop the other one in and we'll get that done I've cut a pot down because I haven't got anything like a nice dish like that to do it with so just for now cut that down pop some of that in there Right, very carefully, I'm going to go either side of this. Give it a little squeeze, tap, flip it. Got a few roots out the bottom, is it? There we go. So we need this pot. Most importantly, we need your you need your pot that the plant comes out. Did I cut this down a bit too low? <laughs> Quite done. Could have done with a little bit more height on that. This isn't going to be. It's fine with place. I'm going to get a nice pot for this. I'm just going to pot it up into a bigger pot for now. Cut that in there. So this grit that I'm using as well is very important. This is lime free washed granite. So if you use granite, it's usually lime free. That's one good thing that you can use. Because they like acid, lime isn't your friend. You don't want anything with lime in. I might like say what I'm going to do with these, I'm going to try and grow some moss to go on the top. So they've got a little bit there that they come with. I'm hoping that will spread. But if not, I'll see if I can get some to grow. I've got a couple of plants with some in. So I'll see if I can get that to grow and spread. And we'll add that in there. So that's going to go in there. I lift that up, pop that in the water, pop that in there. Perfect, look at that. 
actually that was just the right height that pot I thought it might have been a little bit too low but that is beautiful nicely firmed in absolutely flush I've got a tiny little rim there now I'm going to get some moss to grow up to that and it will be perfect just like that as it is so you know gardening doesn't have to be expensive it can be with whatever you've got now if you want it to look really posh you can go and buy some nice pots if you're not worried and you like things a bit more rusty you can cut down a pot that works it does just the same job a little tidy up that ain't going to waste chuck that in there i've got some more mixed up now i've got my tub with me normal compost in this is me normal compost use that in there brilliant use of these things i've got an old one just use that for keeping me compost in so i mix it all up and i know this is already mixed to ready to go and this has got all my grit and everything in there a little bit of bark and everything in there you know twigs there you go <laughs> whatever you want in there so that's already mixed ready to go but that's no good for acid loving plants you need the ericaceous so what i'll do is i've got a little bit mixed up there now i can keep that mixed with a bit of grit and everything else ready to go so if i've got anything like this needs popping up needs a bit more there it is so i've got a choice then right there you go that is perfect absolutely perfect i'm pleased with that looks good a little bit of moss grain over there and that will hide that up nicely but for now she's planted she's in a little bit more soil it's got room to grow and hopefully that crown will develop and we'll get some more fronds or whatever you call them on there this one has flowered already it's the flowers are finished so um we'll see i can probably snip that back it might flower again but there you go that's me uh carnivorous plants planted up for today all right so i've changed my mind for now with the moss so i've just uh give it a fine covering of the gravel which is sort of granite just to cover that up and uh, help hold the moisture in so it doesn't evaporate quite as quickly um it's got to stay wet so i just thought sort of, if i cover it for now hopefully if the moss does grow it will grow over that anyway you know but we'll see but i think it just uh, finishes it off for now anyway so happy day right catch you all next time bye for now